Oh, hi, Mark. <sighs> you know, you know what I think would really spice things up if I were to hang some posters up back there. I should probably do that sometime soonish, because it's not as though I don't have posters, and that's just a whole ass blank wall behind me. Like, it, I have no plans for that whole wall. Like, I, I could hang posters there. I just. I don't know. I'm I'm a lazy ass. I uh, because it's not as though I don't have the posters to hang. Like I have a framed Friday the Thirteenth poster right over there as we speak, and then behind it is like a framed uh, horror movie collage poster. And then if I didn't want to hang one of those up, I could put one of my other posters, which are the same size in one of those frames like i have a dawn of the dead poster texas chainsaw massacre poster house on haunted hill poster etc etc um i i think i should do that sometime soon just i don't know fill that wall up behind me somehow because it's a little bare back there i've kind of noticed that it's just i don't know fun and motivation anyway this is going to be a bit of a shorter um bit of a shorter haul video uh, i did tell you guys that i won't just make these videos just to make these videos like i'm i'm not going to make a haul video if i don't think there's enough here to talk about i do think there is enough here to talk about though i think there's plenty it's just, it's not as big as some of my other hauls, you know. So this is everything that I've acquired since the last, um, the last time I did one of these videos. But, uh, But yeah, anyway, without further ado, I'm sorry guys, that was a long ass pause. Let's get in to the collection update. First of all, I'm going to show you guys something that's non-horror, but it's like kind of culty. You know, it's got that sort of cult vibe to it, which is why I'm including it in here, just because it's kind of, you know. I don't know, it's not horror adjacent, really, at least I don't think it is, but it's very much so, um, very kind of cult cinema where, I don't know, niche, it's niche. Barbarella, Queen of the Galaxy. I, it's niche. <laughs> it's culty, I, I told you. Um, from the looks of it, though, Barbarella is a fucking babe. Yeah. So I'm not going to object to this. I found it at a thrift store. A uh, local antique shop that opened up not too long ago. And I, I went in one day and I came out with quite a few movies. So. That was a strange sound. Come out of a soda can. Oh, yeah. The fizz. The boobles. And yes, I am transferring it from can to cup. More specifically, can to mug. The reason being... Actually, there's a couple of reasons. A, this soda wasn't cold. So, you know. It'd be kind of gross to just drink out of the can. Not really gross, just not preferable. Because, you know, I have ice if I drink it out of a cup. And B, look at the cup. I love me my horror mugs. I used to have a Friday the 13th one too, and then it broke in the... Not in the dishwasher. I dropped it. It's the most depressing day of my life. <laughs> my broken ass uh, Friday the 13th mug. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Talking about my, my mugs. 
First up, we have some VHSs that I found. Um, so, to give you guys kind of an idea of how often I buy VHSs, I don't buy them often. <laughs> and when I do buy VHS tapes, typically I just buy a couple of them. You know, it's not really like a... It's not a thing that I really do. It's not this... Like, I'm not, I don't consider myself a VHS tape collector. I just, if I stumble upon one here or there, uh, I'll pick it up if it's kind of, if I consider it kind of cool. Um, or if it's something collectible, like my Terrifier VHS tape. But, anyway. Phantasm. I already owned this movie on DVD. Now all that's left is to get it on Blu-ray. Um... Yeah, it's pretty neat to own on VHS. I mean, it's just, it's neat when you find older horror movies on VHS at a, at kind of, at thrift stores and places like that, you know. Just gives you the old, kind of the old school vibe with it. <clears throat> of course, this is like, this particular release of Phantasm was released in like 1998. Which, yeah, 1998, I was actually spot on with that. Which kind of kind of sucks. It would it would have been cooler to find an older VHS. Just put it that way, but... Jeepers Creepers on VHS. Uh, I did already own this movie on DVD. But, uh... I don't know, I figured if... <laughs> if I could own it on VHS, why not? That's kind of a, I don't know... Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to own on VHS. Not that I'm like a huge Jeepers Creepers fan. It's just the movie's decent. It's decent. Uh, Wishmaster 2. I actually prefer this movie to the first one. I thought this was a really neat find. Um, <laughs> this movie got one of the biggest laughs out of me ever. The uh, The lawyer scene. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you don't. Anywho. Uh, now we're going to get into... I only had three VHS tapes, guys. Like I said, I'm not a huge collector of VHS tapes. Uh, I think those were... Those are 50, 50 cents a piece. Meaning, you know, like... I spent a buck fifty on that collectively. So... That's, that's the kind of money that I'm okay with dropping on VHS tapes. But... Anyway, yeah, let's get into DVDs and Blu-rays and the, and the such. All right, first up here that we're going to talk about is Evil Dead Trap 2. So this movie makes no damn sense. Uh, I bought Evil Dead Trap 1 not too long ago, and I really enjoyed it. I thought the movie was batshit insane. Um... Which is why, which is what compelled me to buy Evil Dead Trap 2. I, I just, I thought it was just ridiculous enough to, if there is a sequel, I definitely need to see the sequel. I saw the sequel and the sequel doesn't make any sense. Um, which is funny because I heard, like I read some of the reviews on Amazon for Evil Dead Trap 1 and everyone was like, yeah, like, it's okay, but Evil Dead Trap 2 is definitely better. Like, Evil Dead Trap 1 is, yeah, but Evil Dead Trap 2 is just, it's better, and it's more... Like, I even heard some people call it more straightforward than Evil Dead Trap 1. Spoiler alert, this movie is not more straightforward than Evil Dead Trap 1, okay? This movie is confusing as hell. I don't know if it's the editing, I don't know if it... Maybe the director was trying to be deep or something. I, I don't, I really don't know. I couldn't tell you. All I know is that I couldn't tell you actually what happens in this movie. So th that's a big, uh, not a plus. <laughs> and then, just so we can get the crippling disappointment out of the way. The Arrow release of Incident in a Ghost Land. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Crippling disappointment. That, that's awesome. I know. 
I thought it was awesome as well. I loved this movie. Um, I watched it for the first time on Shudder. And yeah, I do think Incident in a Ghostland is absolutely fantastic. The problem with this, <clears throat> this is a Region B Blu-ray. Now I knew that when I purchased it. However, I thought I had a Region B player because extreme close up. Whoa. <laughs> anyway, because this Blu-ray, my Madman Blu-ray, uh, has played on my player ever since the day I got it. And I don't know if you guys can see that there. You can't. It's too blurry. Sorry. Um, but this is a region B. Everything on it says region B. And it's funny because every single Blu-ray that I've thrown this into has played. And I guess they're all region 1 slash region A players. So I don't understand why they all played my Mad Men Blu-ray. I really don't get it. Now, I'm not going to complain about it. Like, I'm very glad this Blu-ray works. I'm just saying that it's very disappointing that this Blu-ray doesn't work for some reason. Very odd to me. Um, yeah, which I found out that my Blu-ray player was region A today. Um... I thought I was region free for the longest time, like I said, because it played that Madman Blu-ray fine. But, uh, you know, I guess at the end of the day, I think the thing about it is that was kind of a fluke. And um, I think my Blu-ray player is basically the version of that particular model of Blu-ray player that isn't region free, which sucks. Uh, there is a model pretty much identical to my Blu-ray player that I have. Uh, pretty sure even the remote is the same. That is region free on Amazon. I'm pretty sure I got that for Christmas. My parents got me that for Christmas a few years back. Um, so I'm pretty sure that it was bought at a retailer here in the United States. Meaning that... Uh, at the end of the at the end of the day, it is gonna be a region A slash region one player, which sucks. But I don't know. It's it's been a good player. Just I I need something to play region Bs, because this is one of the reasons. Incident in a Ghost Land Arrow Blu-ray. It's pretty awesome that this exists. If I'm being entirely honest. Um. But yeah. I just figured I'd get the uh, the downers out of the way. Alrighty. Pretty sure I got this at the same thrift store that I got that other one from. Anyway. Dracula, Prince of Darkness. I've never seen this. I have seen a couple of the other Christopher Lee Draculas. I've seen Horror of Dracula and the Satanic Rites of Dracula. I like Horror of Dracula a good amount. I do not like the Satanic Rites of Dracula hardly at all. Uh, I think that movie's cheesy as shit, and it's just, it's not very good. The Mummy. This is the original one from the 30s. I don't... 32? As a guess. <laughs> I was right, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1932. But, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy these Universal Legacy editions. I only own one other one, which is my copy, my DVD copy of Psycho, uh, which was the first... That's, like, the first time I ever owned Psycho, and that was how I watched Psycho the first time, was from the Universal Legacy Edition series of it that I got from a thrift store. So that's kind of neat. I just randomly found the, the mummy at a thrift store. But I do think these are kind of neat little editions here. You know, they got the two discs, and I don't know. I think they're kind of coolio. 
from dusk till dawn one through three and the full tilt boogie um i've seen one i own one i have not seen two or three and of course i haven't seen full tilt boogie which is the documentary on from dusk till dawn not like huge on documentaries i'll watch one every once in a while but you know the From Dusk Till Dawn movies, they, they very much so seem like they're going to, to devolve really quickly into trashy, trashy sequels. But, uh, I'll give them a shot. Obviously, I thought it was at least worth me buying this DVD for like two bucks at a thrift store, so. And then this is not one of my proudest moments, honestly. One of these super cheap 50 horror classics little chubby DVD DVD cases. I almost called it a box set. It so most certainly is not a box set. Um, you know, but it did have some movies in here that like I, I needed and I didn't have. Things like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um... Things like, things like Eaten Alive, uh, to the Toby Hooper film, which actually that's probably the highlight of this whole set for me, is Eaten Alive. I have been wanting to see that movie. But um, things like <laughs> The Gorilla, that sounds interesting. The Beast of Yucca Flats, you know... Um, Phantom from 10,000 Leagues, uh, Last Woman on Earth, Attack of the Giant Leeches. I don't think I own a copy of that. If I do, it's in one of my multi-packs, uh, one of my generic multi-packs. And I want to say, oh, yeah, it has Wasp Woman. That's, that's what I was looking for, for whatever reason. That was just, like, the one that I remembered, because it had Wasp Woman. And then I was looking through, and I couldn't find it, and I got worried. <laughs> Thought I was losing my marbles for a second. Anyway, Ghost Ship. This is the old Clipper Case DVD. It's nothing fancy. <laughs> it nothing fancy at all. Uh, because, I, you know, I'm not huge on Ghost Ship. I think it's an okay-ish movie. <sighs> that at the end of the day, it really isn't anything special in my opinion. Um... It's got a really cool opening. That's about all I can say for it. I, I don't remember this film very well. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm i glad I found it. I'm glad I bought it. It's just, this will be good for the rest of eternity. Like, I will never feel the need to go out and buy the nice Scream Factory Blu-ray of Ghost Ship. Uh, just, just not gonna happen, I don't think. The Crazies. This is the remake, not George A. Romero's original. This is a decent movie. This is one of the this is one of the earlier horror films that I'd actually seen, I think. I just I've never owned this movie until now. Uh I do like this movie. It's just I don't know. The, the Crazies isn't like one of the more rewatchable horror movies to me. But that being said, I do think it like it's nice owning it. My thing is I like having kind of a library of movies where, like, if I even remotely like a movie, where if I ever get the itch to watch the movie again, then I can just go into my collection. Oh, where, where is it at? Oh, there it is. The Signal. Take out The Signal. Watch it. Which, that is pretty much the perfect... Uh, the perfect description of the signal. I like it just enough to maybe watch it again in like 30 years. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the Predator. That is such a stupid way to put that on the on the cover though. Because it reads like... Ah, God, I, I really hate that. Anyway. Yeah, The Predator on DVD. I found it at a thrift store. You know, it's... It's all right. I think a lot of people kind of overhyped how freaking bad this movie is. You know, there's a lot of people that really hated The Predator. At the end of the day, I don't think The Predator is that bad. 
it's okay. It's okay. The Evil Dead. I did already own this movie. This is just a different edition. I do like to buy multiple editions of the same movie uh, from time to time. Not always. Like, I'm. you're never going to see me with two editions of... Teristas. You know, you're never going to see me with two editions of Severance or... Sorry, guys, I'm just looking... Lava Lantula. Um, probably not Lord of Illusions. Like, you're never going to see me with two editions of a lot of these movies, but every once in a while there is a movie that I kind of like. I would just like to own the other edition of, and this is kind of the older, more classic edition of The Evil Dead, the Anchor Bay, the Anchor Bay one. And so I, I don't know, I figured it'd be kind of cool to own this. So I picked it up. It was super cheap. So I, how am I gonna, how am I gonna pass something up? <coughs> That's like super cheap. Silent Hill Revelation. Um, I'm pretty sure this movie's gonna be donkey shit, but I did want to see it because I actually really enjoy, uh, Silent Hill, the original 2006 movie. I think it's 2006. Don't quote me on that, but. I actually really enjoy the, the original Silent Hill movie. <clears throat> to this day, I maintain that it's probably the best video game of all time, or the best video game movie of all time, in my opinion. Um, that being said, this is released before April 16th, 2021, or at least I hope I get it released before April 16th, 2021. Um, in case you didn't know, the new Mortal Kombat movie comes out on April 16th of 2021, which is why I say that, because I am anticipating that movie to be friggin' awesome. So, it could very well be uh, dethroned. But I do think that the 2006 Silent Hill movie is actually the best video game movie, in my opinion. Uh, so, I figured I'd at least check out Silent Hill Revelation. Mama. Um... This is a movie that I'm not huge on. In my opinion, I think this movie was hugely uh, overhyped. I think at the end of the day, this movie was just very... It felt very generic to me. Just very generic. The, the creature in this, uh, though being kind of creepy, was just kind of a CGI monstrosity. I... I don't know. I'm not as huge on Mama as most people are. Yeah, like right here. like There's a quote on the back, literally, at the top. says, horror at its best. You are on crack. You are on crack cocaine. If you think that this is horror at its best. Jesus. Uh, it is directed by Andy Muschietti, though. Who directed my favorite horror film of all time, It, 2017, which, um, I suppose there's a reason to revisit it for me, but I, I don't know, I don't think my opinion's gonna change much, um, I think it's gonna stay pretty much the same as it's been, which is, it's pretty generic. You know, this guy directed a pretty generic movie, and then he directed a pretty fantastic movie. I think that's going to be my opinion anyway. I guess I should probably hold out until I see it again. But The Others with Nicole Kidman. This is actually a movie that I was looking into on Amazon, and I just found it at a thrift store. That being said, the case it's in is less than favorable. It has like a sticker on it and... For whatever reason, that spine is weird. Where, like, part of the others is right here. Like, the title, and then part of it's right here. You can barely see that, I know. But it's... I don't know. Th that bothers me. Um, I... And then, literally, part of it is, like, cut off right here. I don't know... I don't know what happened to this poor DVD, but... It's been through the ringer. And even, like, the disc. I think when I bought this, the disc was loose inside. But it 
I did buy it from a thrift store, so I was able to inspect the disc first. Um, but anyway, th this DVD is a little more pricey on Amazon, so I figured just spend the two bucks at the thrift store and just deal with the kind of subpar looking case. I think it's fine. Uh, I have not seen the others, and I've heard that the others is very good. I've heard it's a very good suspenseful sort of movie, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. Channel 13, I've already actually done a full length review on this if you guys want to uh, if you guys want to check that out. I do like this movie. Um It's a little, you know, shot on video-ish. <laughs> but uh overall it's fun. I do think this is fun. Uh if you like shot on video horror, I I recommend this. Channel 13 is fun stuff. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, like, this movie's a sack of shit. Don't, don't watch it, because that's just, that's not how I feel. It's, it's not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, it's fun, though. And then we are actually to the last two, which I think, personally, that I've saved the best two for last. Um, had my Incident in the Ghostland Blu-ray played, that would have been one of the one of the things that I saved for last, but um, yeah, evidently it didn't, so I didn't. But uh, anyway, moving on. This was actually a last second kind of uh, decision purchase that I got from Amazon. The Church from Mikel Suave. I have no idea if I said his name right, by the way. And that's just. That's how it sounds natural to pronounce it to me. Mikhail Suave. I don't know. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. Eat an ass. I mean, what? Anyway. Uh, Mikhail Suave did direct Stage Fright, the 1987 slasher film. So I'm actually, I am interested in checking this out. Quite interested, actually, because Stage Fright's a pretty cool movie. Um, or Aquarius, I guess, depending on where you are in the world. But I thought Stage Fright was really cool. So, The Church, and I'm pretty sure this is, like, produced and partially written, even, by Dario Argento. Didn't it say somewhere back here? Yeah, The Church was co-written and produced by Maestro Dario Argento. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Definitely uh, an interesting sort of flick, and it's Italian, which I can never have enough Italian horror. It's a reality of life. There's no such thing as enough. And then this is the last Blu-ray. I do think I've saved the most exciting for last. Yeah, I personally think so anyway. The shameless DVD of Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Which, by the way, this has a reversible reversible cover art, which I thought was super cool. Um, I'm not going to reverse it. it. Here's the cover art it comes in, and then if you want to see the reversible cover art, just look up Four Flies on Grey Velvet. And I think the reversed, the reversed cover art on the Shameless Blu-ray is actually like the first cover art that pops up on Google um, when you look up Four Flies on Grey Velvet. It's just that, that cover art with like, I'm trying to see. Yeah, it's like a, fuck if I know, like a face splitting and then like a girl screaming in the face. But I think this was the first film in Dario Argento's Animal Trilogy. 1971. Actually, no. Pretty sure Bird with the Crystal Plumage predates this then. Because didn't that movie come out in 1970? Bird with the Crystal Plumage? I, I don't know. I have only seen Bird with the Crystal Plumage once. That's another movie that I actually need to purchase. Um, I know it predates Cat of Nine Tales. By quite a bit, I think. Right? By quite a bit. I want to say that movie came out like five or six years after this one. But anyway... 
<sighs> I'm rambling at this point, but Four Flies on Grey Velvet, I'm really looking forward to this. I'd say this is like one of the last movies from Dario Argento that I haven't seen that I'm really looking forward to. I think largely speaking, the other movies that I haven't seen from Argento are going to be chores to watch, unfortunately. Um, Argento is my f second favorite director, but again, that's not because all of his films are fantastic. That's because a good percentage of his films are pretty fantastic. And I mean, when I say fantastic, I mean Argento makes fantastic films. So, you know, like, these are films that I love. When I say Argento's films are fantastic, I, I love them. You know, like, Wes Craven has made a lot of fun movies. Um, and I use Wes Craven because he's another one of my favorite directors. He's just not as high up on the scale as Dario Argento. You know, Wes Craven made A Nightmare on Elm Street, which was fantastic. He made New Nightmare, which was pretty good. It, it depends, really, on your um, on your outlook on New Nightmare. A lot of people love it. I like it, um, but it's, it's not one of my favorite Wes Craven movies, but it's pretty good, you know, and then he made Shocker, which was fun. He made Last House on the Left, which was excellent, but it's not a movie that I can really watch over and over again because, you know, depressing. Then he made The Hills Have Eyes, which was a pretty, pretty damn good movie. Uh, that one's actually one that I like to watch quite a bit, but and then he made People Under the Stairs, which was an okay movie. Uh, I think those are the only Craven films I've seen. I'm probably wrong, and I'm probably leaving something out. But that being said, those are six films, and though I liked all of them, I will say that I don't love all of them. Not that I love all of Argento's films. What I'm trying to say, hey, you guys didn't ask for any of this. Oh, shit, I'm running out of time. Fuck. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. I was running out of space on my phone. I had a bunch of unnecessary videos that I've just been too lazy to clear out um, from previous from from previous YouTube videos that I just haven't uh, I haven't deleted yet, which I should delete that more often. Anyway, what what I was trying to say pertaining to Dario Argento is that when he makes a good film, he makes a great film. And he has a lot of good films. Therefore, he has a lot of great films. You know, he has Suspiria, which is like my top five horror movies of all time for me. So that already gives him a huge bump up over even the greatest horror directors. Because Wes Craven doesn't have a movie in my top five. John Carpenter doesn't have a movie in my top five. Um, Toby Hooper doesn't have a movie in my top five. So on and so forth. You guys get the point. But he has Suspiria, Deep Red, which I'm not as high on as everyone else, granted. But it is, it is a really good movie. The Cat of Nine Tails, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Phenomena, Tenebrae, <sighs> Inferno, which I don't own. I need to buy Inferno. Am I missing something, or is it just that seven? I mean, that seven alone is pretty, pretty fantastic. I mean, just that seven. I love almost all of those seven films, and that's just his films that I love at this point. You know, so... It's it's just kind of a like I've explained before. It's a batter. It's a batting average thing for me, uh, which is why I love Lucio Fulci above all else. He just the man's endlessly entertaining. Like I've seen twenty one Lucio Fulci movies, and I've liked twenty of them. So <laughs> I've like let's put it this way: I've liked twenty of them enough to watch them all again, like repeatedly. So anyway. I went in, I went way too far into that, but Four Flies on Grey Velvet, looking forward to it. I'm hoping 
that I can add that at the list of Dario Argento movies that I love. Because I've seen other Argento movies. You know, like I've seen some of his not as good ones, like The Card Player. Oof. Oof. It's a rough one. Um, Do You Like Hitchcock? That's another pretty rough one. I think The Card Player is a little better than Do You Like Hitchcock, but... Pelts? Pelts isn't great. Oh, crap. How did I miss that? Number eight. Number eight Dario Argento movie that I friggin' absolutely adore is Opera. I love Opera, and I'm pretty sure I missed that on my initial counting of Dario Argento movies that I love. But I love Opera. Great movie. Anyway, guys, um... You did not come here to hear me ramble about Dario Argento. But you got it anyway. You're welcome. Um, those are all my pickups, guys. Like I said, I think I saved the best for last. I'm most excited for Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Uh, very much so looking forward to uh, checking that out. I might check it out. I'm going to check it out here pretty soon. Lucio, quit licking the air, you nasty. For real? For realsies. In case you're out of the loop, I have a pug that is attached to me at the hip, essentially. And, uh, you know, not, not, not literally, because that would be the most bizarre case of Siamese twinery that I've ever heard of. But... The dog follows me everywhere I friggin' go, and he he feels the need to just lick the air all the time. He just sits there. <laughs> and he makes the grossest sounds. It constantly sounds like someone gumming macaroni, and it's the, it's the dumbest thing. It's the nastiest thing. Anyway... I'm off that. That got me distracted. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that movie soon. <laughs> I'm off my game tonight, guys. Alright, I'll catch you guys on the next one.